for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to the panel for being here. Um, uh, Mr. Judd, uh, a, a constituent of mine um, who's a DHS officer, uh, contacted me. He's, he's been uh, uh, working on the border in California. Um, he expressed concerns about a policy, as he puts it, uh, with California and Mexico, where individuals who cross the border illegally cannot be sent home but are processed through uh, and then released into the U.S. with court dates as long as seven to ten years down the road. Uh, are you aware of that policy? Yes, I am. That's, it, we dub it the catch and release policy. It's extremely disconcerting to all Border Patrol agents. If you ask Border Patrol agents, they believe that it's one of those driving factors that, that invites individuals to try to break our... our is it unique policy. to California? It is not. Um, are, are all the aliens who cross the border given uh, notices to appear before the court? No, they are not. Um. Well, let me, let, me, let me take that back. Let me take, I, I'm sorry. Not all illegal aliens that we arrest are given notices to appear. And there are different factors that go into that. I would, I would generally say that if we see somebody cross the border, that that individual would be given a notice to appear. But not all illegal aliens that we arrest are given notices to appear. What's, what's the typical time frame for, uh, for court uh, hearings? Um, I, I don't deal with the court hearings from what I'm hearing um, from high-level DHS officials. I'm, I'm hearing anywhere between five to seven years. Mr. Vitello, uh, did I get that right? <laughs> Vitello, correct. Yeah. Yes, I, I mean, I've, I've heard the same thing. It varies by city and it varies by the capacity that the Department of Justice has to, ha to schedule and, and, uh, and notice those hearings. Um, Congressman, can, I'm sorry to be, can I weigh in on the immigration courts? Because we've been recommending, we just issued a report on the need to adequately fund the immigration courts to bring down those backlogs and delays. Just wanted and so to your contention is funding? Yes, that's actually a major, um, a major need is funding for the immigration courts. Thank you. Let me, let me ask, uh, Mr. Judd, are there any, uh, any efforts to uh, keep track of the whereabouts of the individuals that are awaiting these lengthy time frame court hearings? Uh, not that I'm aware of. All they need to do is provide us an address, and it can be an obscure address. For instance, um, in, in the, uh, the mid-2000s, we were arresting a large number of Brazilians in the Tucson sector, and all Brazilians were giving us, a, a large number of these Brazilians were giving us the exact same address um, over and over. Large over. buildings, huh? Yeah, exactly. And, and we were releasing those individuals based upon the addresses that they were giving us. I assume this is frustrating to, to, to your colleagues. It's extremely frustrating, but what gets even more frustrating is when we have a CBP commissioner that tells us if we don't like it, we can go find another job. That's even more frustrating. Um, Mr. McGraw, uh, how uh, are the administration's efforts or enforcement priorities and release policies reflect, uh, re affecting your organization? Well, clearly uh, we're concerned, the governor's expressed his concern about <clears throat> the potential Syrian refugees coming to Texas. There's no adequate way to <clears throat> properly vet them, and that's a concern from a national security standpoint, and he's made it very clear. We're concerned that we continue to, to see transnational gangs, criminal aliens, uh, cartels, cartel operatives, and drugs, heroin, marijuana, methamphetamine, and cocaine uh, infiltrate Texas and throughout Texas and really throughout the nation. And uh, those, are those, concern, those are the key concerns that we have. And some of the other related transnational crime that happens when you become a transshipment center for cartel drug and human smuggling, including home invasions, including high-speed pursuits, including uh, stash house extortions, including kidnapping, all those things that occur and we're having to address in Texas as a result of it. And at the end of the day, the border's not secure. I, I, would, I would assume you have ideas on how to secure that and even policies that could be implemented rather rapidly. If, if you were allowed as a, as a state official responsible for securing um, your people's safety and borders, could you do it? I could tell you that this chief right next to me could do it if provided the appropriate resources. If Border Patrol is given the sufficient Border Patrol agents, the detection technology, and the aviation assets, they could do it today. There's no doubt in my mind uh, they can do it. So this isn't a problem, but for the fact you're not allowed to do what you're 
able to do, and I would assume Mr. Vettiello uh, as well? Well, the problem is it hadn't been properly resourced over the decades. The bottom line is border security has not been a priority, not been a, a, a concern as it relates to multiple administrations. And in today's threat environment, you can't afford not to con be concerned about border security. It impacts Texas from a public safety standpoint. It impacts us from a national security standpoint, a homeland security standpoint, and not just Texas, the rest of the nation. Gentlemen's time Thank has you. expired. Uh, we're trying to